Okay. This is news, guys. Homeowners across the nation sue all bank servicers and their offshore havens. Spire Law officially announces filing of landmark lawsuit. Largest international money laundering network in history formed during Obama administration. U.S. banks, the theft of homeowners, money laundered through Cayman Islands, Isle of Man, and numerous offshore-based affiliates. New York, April 23, 2012. Market Wire, via Comtext, in a lawsuit alleged to involve the largest money laundering network in the United States history, Spire Law Group, on behalf of homeowners across the country, was filed a mass tort action in the Supreme Court of New York, County of Kings. Homeowners across the country have sued every major bank servicer and their subsidiaries, formed in countries known as havens for money laundering, such as Cayman Islands, the Isle of Man, Luxembourg, and Malaysia, alleging that the, while the Obama administration was publicly encouraging loan modifications for homeowners, it was privately ratifying the formation of these shell companies in violation of the United States Patriot Act and state law and federal law. The, further, the case further alleges that through these obscure foreign companies, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo Bank, Citigroup, Citibank, One West Bank, and numerous other federally chartered banks stole hundreds of millions of dollars of homeowners' money during the last decade and then laundered it through offshore companies. The complaint index number 500827 was filed by Spire Law Group LLP and several of the firm's affiliates and partners across the United States. Far from being ambiguous, this is a complaint that names names. Indeed, the lawsuit identifies specific companies and offshore countries used in this enormous money laundering scheme. Federally chartered banks, theft of money, and their utilization of offshore tax haven subsidiaries represent potential FDIC violations, violations of New York law, and countless other legal wrongdoings under state and federal law. Wait, it gets better. You can't believe this. The laundering of trillions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer money and the wrongful taking of their homes of, the ta of those taxpayers was known by the administration and expressly supported it. Evidence uncovered by the plaintiffs revealed that the administration ignored its own agency reports and reports from the Department of Homeland Security about this situation, dating as far back as 2010. Worse, the administration purported to endorse a national bank settlement without disclosing or having any public discourse whatsoever about the thousands of foreign tax havens now wholly owned by our nation's banks. State stated Eric J. Wittenberg of Columbus, Ohio, a noted trial lawyer, author, and student of U.S. history on behalf of plaintiffs in the case. The suing homeowners reveal how deeply they were defrauded by bank and governmental corruption and are suing for conversion, larceny, fraud, and for violations of other provisions of New York state law committed by these financial institutions and their offshore counterparts. You guys listening to this? This is not going to be mainstream news because they own the mainstream news. The lawsuit explains why loans were, in general, rarely modified after 2009. Well, let's just say that our journalists have non-disclosures that they've signed and everything that gets covered in the media has to be passed by the administration first. You could call us communist country. Anyway, it explains why the entire bank crisis worsened, crippling the economy of the United States and stripping countless homeowners of their piece of the American dream. More like pie in the face now. It is indeed a fact that the administration has spent far more money stopping bank investigations. Hi. Um, that's where our tax dollars have been going. Then they have investigating them. When the administration's agencies like the FDIC blew the whistle, their reports were ignored. Here we go. Um, 
The case is styled Abiel and Bank of America, etc. at all. The, the, and includes such entities as Cayman, da, 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 Luxembourg, J.P. Morgan, Luxembourg, as well as hundreds of other obscure, obs uh, uh, offshore obscure entities somehow owned by federally chartered banks and formed under the nose of the administration and the FDIC. Hmm, interesting. Um, commenting further on the case, Wittenberg stated, as it is, it's as if it's not bad enough. These banks collect money and don't credit it to the homeowners' accounts. Hi, <laughs> we sent in a few bonds of our own. Uh, our case files are this thick. As if, uh, let's see, if that's, as if that's not bad enough and those banks then foreclose when they know that they don't have the legal enforceable interest in the realty. We now learn that they have been operating under unbridled free reign given by the administration and some states, attorneys general, in formulating this international money laundering network. Hi. Now that the light of day has been shined on it, I believe we can all rest assured that the beginning of the end of the bank crisis has arrived. This is what we've been doing for three years, trying to help people keep their houses. But we've been going up against the giant snake called fraudulent administrative cartels. This was the best news I've heard all day. So, all United States homeowners may have the right, all United States homeowners may have the right to bring a lawsuit of this kind if they paid money to a national bank servicer during the years 2003 to 2009. One lawyer impacted by the corruption, Michael J. Stein, who formerly represented the FDIC and the RTC and the FSLIC, woo, busted during the savings and loan scandal of the 1990s and who predicted all of the foregoing in open courts two years ago. Listen up, people. He commented, two years ago, I remarked in open court to a Los Angeles Superior Court judge. By the way, Los Angeles Superior Court has been found having the most criminal cartels uh, that were all called out in 2009 or 10. They had a huge list of them. And they're all, hi, Hague. As well as two legislators, including Senator Dianne Feinstein, office during a multitude of in-person meetings that the ongoing violations of the Patriot Act of these financial institutions was outrageous and a breach of the public trust of unprecedented proportions. Trust times two, by the way. There's more about that later. The size and scope of this misconduct stretching to faraway islands never before having standing as approved United States Bank's affiliates is remarkable and emblematic of what we have seen, he continued. The bank crisis represents the height of corruption and brazen behavior where our historically trusted financial institutions have no qualms about breaking the law because they have the administration behind them. Banks do well enough when they operate lawfully without needing to be permitted to operate as criminal enterprises that steal money from United States citizens. I think that the Federal Reserve, which is the, the kingpin cartel, has rules over these banks. And I think the banks are going to call for a jubilee because I think they've been thrown under the bus here. Now, that's just an opinion. We'll see. It'll come out and wash, but watch. Watch what happens. Um, let's see. Additional plaintiffs counsel Nicholas Ma M O C C I A commented, having been in the trenches of the bank crisis for years, I always knew that the misconduct was being conducted by a network. When I started litigating against banks, however, I could never imagine that it would be this extensive. I look forward to taking discovery of these thousands of obscure foreign entities and to obtaining for homeowners their constitutionally entitled injuries for this international ring of theft and deception. You've no idea how good this feels to hear this finally out in the public. We have been fighting for this for three years in the trenches, and we've been called conspiratorious. Oh, you're just, you're just, a, you don't, you're an administration hater. You don't, you're just, you're just an anti-taxpayer. You're just a, no, we're truth seekers and solution finders. That's what we are. Comments were requested from the Attorney General's office in New York, California, Nevada, and Massachusetts, uh, and the White House, but no comment was provided. Uh, Spire Law Group. 
is a national law firm whose motto is the public should be protected at all costs from corruption in whatever form it, represent, it presents itself. The firm is comprised of lawyers nationally with more than 250 years experience in a span of matters ranging from representing large corporations and wealthy individuals to also representing the masses. The firm is at the front lines litigating against government officials, banks, defunct lo loan pools, and now the very offshore entities where the corruption was enabled and perpetrated. Hi, perpetrators! Here's their information. James N. Feidler, Esquire, Managing Partner, Spire Law Group. Eight, let's see, 877-475-2446, I think. Uh, view. Let me scan in a little bit because my eyes are getting old. Zoom in. 2448. Yeah, so 877 475 2448. We are sending our case files of all of our exhaustive administrative remedies to this gentleman who has wonderfully somehow got this news. Uh, hi. It's going to be a great day. Stay tuned. Here we go. The dominoes have just been 